Hey guys, Dr. Childs here, and today we are going to be discussing the symptoms of selenium deficiency. Specifically, we're going to be talking about what selenium is, what it does for your body, the symptoms that you may have a deficiency of selenium in your body, and then also we're going to talk about what to do if you think you have those symptoms and how to supplement if you feel that that's the case. So let's jump right in. First, we'll just do a quick little primer of why selenium is important for your body. Okay, so first of all, selenium is what is called a trace mineral, and it's important because it is involved in and incorporated into these very special enzymes inside of your body, and these enzymes are called selenoproteins. All right, and so we'll talk about, there's a lot of these selenoproteins, by the way, but we'll talk about three really important selenoproteins. So first is um, the glutathione peroxidase enzyme. So this is a, a series of enzymes, and they all function to produce glutathione, which you probably know as the master antioxidant in the body. So the glutathione comes and it cleans up free radicals and other things that are created inside of your cell, which may cause cell damage. So it's very important for that. Number two, it's involved in the activation of iodothyronine deiodinases. So don't let that word confuse you. Those are just the, the enzymes which catalyze thyroid function and metabolism. So very important for your thyroid. And then number three is the thioredoxin reductase. And these are enzymes which are involved in energy production and metabolism. So what we have here, so let's put this into context for you. We understand that selenium is important and it's incorporated into all of these enzymes. And if your body doesn't have a sufficient amount of selenium, then these enzymes won't function the way that they're supposed to. And that's how you get the symptoms of selenium deficiency, right? Because if, you're, if your body doesn't have enough selenium and it's not incorporated into these deiodinases, then your thyroid's not going to be functioning at, at 100%. And likewise, you can't produce glutathione and you can't produce the enzymes necessary to create or have a normal metabolism and so on. So that's why selenium is so important. So let's talk about what I'm calling eight warning signs or eight signs that you may have selenium deficiency. And these are early warning signs, but they can, you know, be from mild to severe depending on how bad selenium deficiency is inside of your body. So number one, I think is very important and that is hair loss, but it also includes changes to hair quality and or hair texture. All right. So what we know is that selenium is involved in the life cycle of the hair follicle. And so if there's insufficient amount of selenium inside of your body, then your hair may suffer. What that'll look like for you is your hair may be falling out, or it may be not as strong as it used to, or it may become brittle, um, it may become thinner, things like that. And what we do know is that supplementing with selenium in cases of patients who are selenium deficient, it helps their hair grow. And we know that because there's there have been, there have been studies which prove that to be the case. Now, I don't want you to think that if you have hair loss, that it's always necessarily due to selenium deficiency, because that is not the case. There are many micronutrients involved in hair growth, including iron, um, zinc, of course, selenium, and biotin. And those are all very important for regrowing your hair or for uh, managing your hair quality. So, But I, I'm mentioning this because it's important, but not because I want you to think that it may solve your hair issue. Okay, that's number one. Number two, thyroid dysfunction. This is another huge one, and this is um, why I'm primarily talking about this today. And that is, if you don't have enough selenium, then the, the enzymes which control your thyroid in your body, the deiodinases, will not function appropriately. And what that means for you is that you may be able to produce enough thyroid hormone, or maybe you're taking thyroid hormone by mouth, but your body's not going to be able to activate it. And the reason for that is these deiodinases, which you can see in this graphic here, they take the inactive thyroid hormone and they activate it. And then they also can inactivate it down this pathway. But what I want you to understand here is that if you don't have enough selenium, then these deiodinases will not work appropriately and your body will not be able to activate T4 into T3. So what you might have are low T3 levels or um, high reverse T3 levels. Uh, we don't usually check T2, but it could result in low T2 levels as well. So anyway, moral of the story here is that selenium is required for proper thyroid function through its impact on these deiodinases. All right. There's a lot of ways to check for that. We'll talk about in just a minute. Number three, a weakened immune system. So that might mean you are highly susceptible to colds. You might have an autoimmune disease, things like that. So if you're somebody that Every time you're near somebody who is sick, you get that illness um, and you find yourself getting sick all throughout the year, that might be an indication that you have some sort of deficiency and selenium, you know, could potentially cause that as well. And what I really want to focus on is um, autoimmune diseases, especially in hypothyroidism. So selenium can be used. It's well, selenium 
uh, forms a protective mechanism inside the thyroid gland. So if you are deficient within selenium, then it predisposes your thyroid to becoming damaged, and that damage um, may be from the immune system, and it may trigger that autoimmune disease or potentiate it, I should say. And so it's really important for managing your immune system and because of its impact in your thyroid can be used to treat Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So that's number three. Number four is fatigue. All right, so this is kind of an interesting one. Um, what we know is that supplementing with selenium can improve fatigue, but the exact mechanism as to why selenium deficiency causes fatigue is not well understood. But if you go back up to the very beginning when I was telling you that it's involved in the production of ATP and your metabolism, this might have something to do with it. Um, but what we do know is that especially uh, in cancer patients who have fatigue and in those people who have GI related issues like IBD or IBS, they tend to benefit from, if they have fatigue, with use, by using uh, selenium. Number five is low serum thyroid lab test. So we already talked about how selenium can impact your thyroid in a negative way, but what is interesting here is that that could be manifested as low thyroid hormones which you can test for in the blood. So I, I'm saying here that a symptom of selenium deficiency is the presence of these low thyroid lab tests, which you can look for. Um, and that has to do with the, the reasons I told you before. So it's involved in the activation of T4 into T3. So if you're not activating T4 into T3, then T3 levels are of course gonna be low. And you can see that in your labs. So if you suspect you have selenium deficiency, I do recommend that you look at your serum thyroid lab tests. And I have other videos which go over all of that. Um, but just, just be aware that that is the case. Number six, this is, I would say, more of a finding as opposed to a symptom. However, it's good to know, and that is elevated serum iron, although it could be low serum iron as well. So I know that might be confusing, um, but what we know is that selenium is involved in the regulation of iron. So if you're selenium deficient, you might have iron dysregulation, and that may manifest as high serum iron or low serum iron, depending. Um, but that, that's kind of a primer which is leading us into number seven, which is perhaps more important, and that is selenium deficiency might cause other mineral deficiencies. And it may not cause them so much as it may make them worse. And so the way I want you to think about it is this. Whatever is causing selenium deficiency in your body is probably not causing a case of isolated selenium deficiency by itself, right? So whatever is causing it is almost always going to be accompanied with other mineral deficiencies because let's say that you're malabsorbing selenium do you think it's do you think it's reasonable that you're out of all of the nutrients that your body needs you're only malabsorbing selenium no that doesn't make any sense instead you're probably malabsorbing a whole array of other important minerals and so what i find is that people who have selenium deficiency also tend to present with other deficiencies in minerals such as magnesium calcium iron copper and of course, zinc. So if you have a suspected case of uh, selenium deficiency, it's probably a good idea to look into those other minerals and supplement those as well. And you can do that with um, a trace mineral supplement or some multivitamins that they're really good will also have trace minerals inside of them. Um, but just realize that th these things tend to go together. So look for them if you can. And you can order tests for some of these things. Number eight is muscle pain. And this one is another one of those things that we're not exactly sure why it, it occurs, um, but it probably has to do with the impact that selenium has on mitochondrial function and how mu and why muscles need ATP to, to relax. And so if you don't have a sufficient amount of ATP production, then that might cause a chronic contraction within the muscle. And then if you have like a knot, you, you can imagine in your head just kind of a ball of muscle just staying um, contracted and that may cause pain. And, and some other issues. So if you can provide your body with the selenium, it might be able to relax and then therefore reduce that muscle pain. Now it isn't the only cause of muscle pain. I don't want you to think of that because that wouldn't be true. But if you have muscle pain, especially if it's like a weird muscle pain, you can't really figure out what's going on, then looking into selenium would potentially be, be beneficial there. So let's talk about supplementing with selenium real quick. So what I recommend is that, and we'll talk about, you know, how to avoid overdosing yourself and making sure that you get enough here in just a second. But generally what you're going to want to look for if you have these symptoms is a dose of selenium somewhere between 50 micrograms and about 150 micrograms per day. So I think that's a safe range because you definitely don't want to exceed 400 micrograms per day because that might put you into the overdose range. So selenium, you can think of it kind of as a Goldilocks nutrient. You need enough of it, but 
But if you don't get enough, it, it's not going to work. But if you get too much, you're going to get excess symptoms, and that's going to cause problems as well. So somewhere between the 50 and 150 microgram range is pretty safe. You can go all the way up to 400, and I think the, that dose range is helpful for those with autoimmune disease or severe deficiency. But I think the safer range is probably somewhere between 50 and 150. Um, but what should you look for if you're worried about negative side effects? Well, the good news is it's really hard to, let's say, cause serious damage when you're supplementing with selenium. And what I mean by that is there are people who have taken up to a gram of this stuff per day, every single day, and even more for a month straight. And they, they have some negative symptoms, but they're not life-threatening or serious symptoms. So you don't need to worry about that in a sense. However, some of these symptoms that you get with overdose they're not very desirable. So we'll talk about those. Um, so this is how you would know if you're taking too much. So if you start with supplementing with selenium, you start to experience some, some of these symptoms, it might, be, it might be an indication that you want to cut back your dose. Okay, so number one, rapid increase in hair loss and or alopecia. What, and so you'll, this, is, this is obviously disturbing because most people take selenium because they want to improve their hair growth, not make it worse. But if you're taking too much, it can actually exacerbate your hair loss. So watch for that. Number two, it can cause damage to the fingernails. It can change your fingernail quality. It can make them brittle, you know, make them flimsy, so on and so forth. So if you're taking too much, you might experience that. Number three, another good sign to watch for is any change in your gastrointestinal symptoms. So that might be things like nausea or change in bowel movements. So again, that would be a sign you're taking too much. And then the last one, number four to look out for, would be memory difficulties such as brain fog or difficulty with concentration. So all of these things, if you experience them, after you start taking selenium, that's a bad sign. Okay, cut back your dose or simply stop taking it for a couple days. Um, but you do not want to take too much selenium because it's going to harm your body. Um, so that's pretty much it. So hopefully these uh, steps and symptoms were helpful to watch out for. Um, but I want to hear from you guys. Do you think that you have selenium deficiency? Um, you know, do, are you experiencing any of these symptoms that are here? Leave, leave your questions or comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one.